The Take with Rick Klein. The nation is confronting a grim milestone and an uncertain road ahead in the COVID-19 crisis. President Donald Trump has chosen to spend this moment of his presidency pursuing conspiracy theories and renewing grudges. Most of his Republican Party is standing by and watching. It's become notable when Trump faces any GOP criticism at all for something he does or says at this stage of his presidency. So it's news when Senator Mitt Romney, Rep. Liz Cheney and Rep. Adam Kinzinger call on Trump to stop spreading a scurrilous and unfounded rumor about MSNBC host Joe Scarborough. But the list of Republicans standing up to the president is short. And while the Scarborough tweets have set some off, the president is also threatening to shut down Twitter using unspecified presidential powers, spreading misinformation about mail-in voting and continuing to rant about something he calls Obamagate. He is also flouting his own administration's guidance when it comes to wearing masks in public. His campaign is pushing a rewritten narrative, fueled by a new, seven-figure national ad buy, about the president's response to the current crisis, which the president himself insists was very fast. Former Vice President Joe Biden responded to the milestone of 100,000 U.S. deaths from COVID-19 with a video message referencing his own history with grief. There are moments in our history so grim, so heart-rending that they're forever fixed in each of our hearts as shared grief. Today is one of those moments, Biden said Wednesday. Trump previously suggested that the death toll would never approach the current levels. His actions this week have reached new levels of provocation and outrage, and while some Republicans are speaking up, most simply are not. The rundown with Mary Alice Parks. Trump's words have the potential to shape public opinion in the case of George Floyd's death in Minneapolis as well the country's larger response to yet another example of apparent egregious violence by police against a black man. When asked if the police officers involved in the case should be prosecuted, Trump said Wednesday, we are going to look at it, and added that his team expected to get a very full report this week. He called it a very sad day and tweeted that he asked for an expedited investigation by the FBI and Justice Department, but stopped short of talking next steps yet. Over Twitter, some leading members of the Republican Party, including Senator Tim Scott, called for the officers themselves to be arrested and more information gathered nationwide on episodes of police brutality. On the Democratic side, any congressional oversight of the case could have beefsteaks implications. Minnesota's Senator Amy Klobuchar not only represents Floyd's home state, but has long been on the presumed shortlist for potential running mates for Joe Biden. During her presidential campaign, Klobuchar faced tough questions from the black community about her decisions as a former prosecutor. Now she's joining other Democrats from the Minnesota delegation in calling for sweeping investigations into Floyd's death at both state and federal levels. The tip with Kendall Carson. The president's sudden public musings about where to hold the convention have landed him in familiar territory, in a standoff with a popular Democratic governor in a battleground state. Trump said North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper's decision on whether the city of Charlotte will be able to host a convention with full attendance must come within a week, or the RNC will yank the gathering in favor of a state further along in the reopening process. Even with all three GOP state leaders in Florida, Georgia and Texas knocking on Trump's door to host the event, North Carolina's chief is staying on track with planning, for now. The governor's office is still awaiting a plan from the RNC, a spokesperson said, about how to pull off the full-scale event Trump desires safely, shifting responsibility onto national Republicans. The city and county are continuing to plan for the convention, steered by national and state protocols on the coronavirus, with guidance on how to execute the large-scale event expected to come in June. And Charlotte Mayor B. Lyles said in a statement to ABC News on Wednesday, while I've remained consistent in my statements regarding the RNC being held in Charlotte, the science and data will ultimately determine what we will collectively do for our city. But with Republicans in a holding pattern, sources told ABC News that some state parties have not received hotel reservations promised weeks ago, underscoring just how uncertain planning is at this point. Bringing America back. Walt Disney World announced a phased reopening plan for its parks. First up, Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom Park on July 11th. 
Read this story and more by checking out Bringing America Back, an ABC News feature that highlights the day's top stories in economic recovery and medical preparedness amid the coronavirus pandemic. The Playlist. ABC News, Start Here Podcast. Thursday morning's episode features University of Chicago economics professor and ABC News contributor Austin Goolsby, who tells us what to make of major layoffs at companies like Boeing and Hertz. Gwen Carr, mother of the late Eric Garner, joins us to discuss the protests in Minneapolis following the death of George Floyd. Then, ABC News' Connor Finnegan explains why the U.S. government no longer views Hong Kong as autonomous from mainland China. HTTP colon slash slash apple dot co slash 2hpokul. ABC News Powerhouse Politics Podcast. Iowa's junior senator, Joni Ernst, said Wednesday that while she would love to rub a little Iowa nice off on President Donald Trump, his leadership style is different from hers and if he changed it, he may not get as much attention from the media. HTTPS colon slash slash apple dot co slash 2 mouth 3 t the 538 Politics Podcast. This installment of the 538 Politics Podcast keys in on the presumptive presidential nominees' relationships with important parts of their coalitions. First, in an interview on The Breakfast Club, former Vice President Joe Biden said, If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. The crew talks about Biden's relationship with black voters, then debates the findings of a new study suggesting that, contrary to the conventional wisdom, President Donald Trump does not have a unique appeal to white working-class voters. HTTPS colon slash slash 53IG.HT slash 2MORQX6 What you need to know today. Download the ABC News app and select the note as an item of interest to receive the day's sharpest political analysis. The Note is a daily ABC News feature that highlights the day's top stories in politics. Please check back tomorrow for the latest.